What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. And sitting across from me this week and every week, <laughs> he can hear colors. It's Desra. And I can smell sounds. Yeah, That's sick. <laughs> And sitting across from me, of course, is Brian Paul. And every week on Why We Love PlayStation VR, we sit around and we blow the dust off of an old PlayStation VR game. Uh, we check it out, we see how it stood the test of time, mm -hmm. we see if it's been patched, given any love by the developers, and, uh, and, and, and then we rate it on a scale from 1 to 3. <laughs> uh, that being said, Desra, what game did we decide to talk about this week? I think we're talking about what may be the oldest game we've ever talked about. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and that's Res Infinite. Yeah. Yeah, so this originally came out in 2002, apparently, or 2001. Yep, 2001. 2001. Yeah. On on PS2 and Dreamcast. It's such a weird time for Sega, too. Yeah. This is like this is when Sega decided to get out of the hardware business. Mm -hmm. It's right when they decided that, oh, that Dreamcast didn't sell well enough. Right. We are out for good. And they Not started... necessarily a bad call. Not a bad call, <laughs> although the Dreamcast was awesome. It was. Uh, and then they decided they started bringing all of their franchises and all of their games, uh, even some of them that were released on Dreamcast, to the Xbox, mm -hmm. to the PlayStation 2, to GameCube, and, uh, and lucky us, on yep. play or lucky me, on yeah. PlayStation 2, uh, we got Res. You did. The original Res, because it had just come out uh, in PAL and uh, Japanese territories mm -hmm. for Dreamcast, but not here in the U.S. No. So the first time U.S. gamers got to play it was this right here. Woo the original Res. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this was actually, for a minute, Hard to find. I, I don't think it's hard to find anymore. No. Nope. Uh, so what kind of game is Res? So at its most basic, it is a rhythm shooter. Yeah. And pretty much. Um, but instead of like having, you know, beeps and boops and arcade sort of sounds, it actually is music. So when you're shooting, when your enemies explode and, and, and die and whatnot, it's all rhythmic and musical sounds. So right. you're basically, you know, depending on how you play it or how skilled you are, you can either make sounds and make music that actually goes with the flow of everything and this nice steady beat and everything's cool or you can have this random cacophony of 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 different sounds so yeah uh it's so in essence it's a rail shooter yes so this yeah. this game if you just put a different skin on it would basically be panzer dragoon it's it's yeah. actually designed by some of the same people right. um and when and when they were working on this game uh when the developers were like we don't want this to be associated as like a music game because no one there wanted anyone to, to get the wrong impression that you needed some sort of musical skill. Oh right, to okay. Play this yeah, game yeah. properly. All right, right. So and and uh, but yet somehow over the years it's it's become known as a music game. And I I'm, and I I can understand where they'd want to not market it that way, but it's a music game. I mean, I, I, I really think so. It's, you know, it's not like Guitar Hero or anything like that. Like, you're not punished for not hitting things at the right rhythm. Oh, absolutely not. Um, but it makes for a more interesting experience, I think. And, and one thing to point out also, it's not just a, you know, if you've never played this, it's not just a shooter, you pick a target, you hit. Uh, you basically hit uh, X button, yeah, um, the X button, and then kind of look around, well, at least in the, the VR version, um, Look around and pick up to eight targets, and then hit the button, and then you fire. You're basically like painting your targets. Oh, right, right. Uh, it, again, locking on. Very, very Panzer Dragoon. Right. Um, <clears throat> now, you could actually play this game just to really drive the point home and clarify it for everybody. Mm -hmm. You could play this game with the sound off. You could. So th yeah. it's so we're, we're, there is no connection to the music as far as. Like getting points or doing well, right. it's just all about the audio video experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to put your headset on, you want to put your headphones on, yes, and uh, and just really embrace uh, what Res has to offer. And actually, at least in our version, um, headphones or it supports seven point one surround sound as well. So that's groovy. <sighs> Need some new headphones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've talked about what kind of game this is, mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about what it looks like for a second. Okay, because. Recent, I mean, we talked about Polybius recently. Yes. About how, like, psychedelic and trippy that is and yes. how, like, retro-looking it is. Mm -hmm. I feel like Res falls into the same category see, of, of visual style. Yeah, I, I I can see that. And, you know, people say, okay, Res, Thumper, and Polybius. They kind of mention all those three in the same, yeah. in the same sentence. And I think Res is really the outlier out of the two. Because um, as we just we talked about Polybius, we talked about Thumper. Those are both, in different ways, kind of about assaulting you. 
<laughs> they're about making the experience as difficult or overwhelming as possible. Yeah. Um, Polybius by just throwing so much visual and audio stuff at you in this storm of, of, of you know overloading your senses and thumper by just kind of like aggressively screwing with the rhythm and things like that and it really and res doesn't do either of those things no. i mean it is there are a lot of kind of yeah trippy visuals there are a few moments here and there where you might get overwhelmed but really that's not the goal of this game yeah. um this is this is more of having an experience I, I i will say that there were moments that were overwhelming yeah uh the because when you start every single level mm. The music starts off with a basic, simple track. Right. Like, very simple music. Mm -hmm. And the graphics start off pretty simple, too. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. And, and as, you, as you progress and as you do better and as you, as you move through the game, they add layers of audio tracks. Mm -hmm. And they add layers, it seems, of graphical effects and, and, and backgrounds that are, like, starting to fill in your environment. Yes. Yeah. Now, at a certain point... It gets a little bit over the top. It almost feels like you're on a roller coaster and they're throwing confetti at your face <laughs> and there are flashing lights and just like pulsating music and everything on the screen is pulsating to the beat of the music. Right. And, and it, at a certain point, you're just like, I remember the first time I played it, mm -hmm. about an hour in, I just remember going, I just had to close my eyes and just be like, I need a second. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. And it's not because I was getting sick. Yeah. It's not because I was like, uh, because I... I, I was, you know, having a freak out. Yeah. I, I was just like, this is too much. Interesting. Yeah. And I, and I, and I enjoy that stuff. Huh. Now, fast forward to today when I replayed it for, for this review. Yeah. No problems. Okay. All right. Now, so the question is, when you had that, was that was clearly before you had played Polybius? Oh, clearly. Yeah. This, okay. came out, this came out a while before Polybius, and I played this at launch. This right. came out actually on launch day, October right. 13, yeah, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I wonder if Polybius is kind of like the inoculation. It's like, oh, your brain can handle that. <laughs> so, you know. Maybe. Maybe. Jeff <laughs> yeah, took it to a new extreme, probably. Th there was, I mean, there were a few moments, like, because you only have, you can only paint eight targets. Yeah. You know, there are some bosses which just, like, dump missiles at you. Yeah. And you can't dodge. You can, you know, and let me stress that you can't move your little avatar or your icon. You can only aim at things. So when all these missiles are coming at you, you've got to paint them all and destroy them all. And there are many times when that's just about impossible. So those are the times when I got overwhelmed. I don't think the visuals or the, the graphics really ever got overwhelming for me. So that's that's interesting. Let me ask you this. Yeah. You can play this game with a DualShock 4. Yes. Or a Move Controller. Yes. Which did you prefer? I prefer the DS4, uh, hands down. Yeah. I, I tried with the Move, and the, the problem is it tries to be helpful and let you use your head and the Move controller both. Yeah. But it gets very confusing. It's like, you know, uh, you so you start using the Move controller. It's like, okay, but then I want to look to see what I was doing, but then your look kind of takes over. The, uh, so uh, the DualShock is definitely the way to go. It's a shame because, like, I really, I really felt like because I agree with you 100%. Okay. I, I felt like I should be able to look around, scan the environment, and, and the move controller should be ocu like should be, uh, should be be activating a, a cursor one-to-one -one, all around the screen wherever I want, even if I'm not looking at right. it. Right, yes. And, and unfortunately, uh, what, it, what it does is, yeah, like you said, the, 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 the headset kind of takes over, mm -hmm. uh, and it never felt one-to-one. -one. I was like pointing at the screen, and yep. I felt like I had to do these huge gestures yeah, just to get absolutely. it to go where I yep. want. Like it was lagging behind, mm -hmm. and uh, whereas if you if you decide to, to use your headset for aiming, it's one-to-one. -one. You're looking... You it's know, perfect, yeah. It's, yeah. it's absolutely perfect. And for a game like this that's a rail shooter, mm -hmm. an arcade rail shooter, you need that like quick reaction time. Yes, and, and the move controller just didn't give it to me. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's, it's even one of those things, like, if they could have had, like, some button on the headset, you wouldn't even need a controller, really. Yeah. I mean, b barely. Um, now, the move controllers did come in handy for other reasons, though. Okay. So I'm, I'm playing with the DualShock 4. Sure. And I've got all the controllers on. Okay. Right, because I'm experimenting. Oh, okay. Right? And so now I've got uh, two, DualShock, two DualShock 4s on and two move controllers on. Okay. And they're all sitting around the couch, and, I, uh -oh. and, I'm, and I'm playing the game. And as the music starts to intensify, my whole couch starts vibrating. <laughs> now, the same thing. Because I forgot yeah. <laughs> that when this game came out, even even like back in the day, like on the Dreamcast, there was a separate controller, not controller, but a thing that would vibrate. Oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, let's in, talk about in, that. Insert, insert <laughs> sex joke here. But like it was called the Trans Vibrator. Mm -hmm. And it was basically this thing that like you were supposed to like put in your couch or, or yeah. sit on or. <laughs> about the size of a computer mouse um, or so. And yeah. 
about, about this big and well, it vibrates. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a big, well, the computer mouse I had last week, if you were watching. That's a big mouse. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that one came out uh, only in Japan. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> according, you could place it in your pocket or wherever. Uh, right. uh, according to uh, Mizuguchi, it, it was kind of a joke, but a very serious joke. This is a direct quote. No sexual meaning, so it's a kind of a cross-sensation feeling. And also... Uh, I like to feel the v- vibration by the foot. I th- so I think it's the feet and the hands. It's a good balance. Some people bite them. I think that's really dangerous, actually. Did uh, he say that? Yes, that was that, that was a direct quote from him. <laughs> uh, so it's, you know, uh, and there is a somewhat infamous review where a female gamer talks about the fun that uh, her and her boyfriend had playing this game with the vibration controller. So look that up on your own free time. But Yeah, so l- l- luckily, <laughs> luckily, uh, they carried this over to the, the VR version of yes. Res Infinite, and, and you can have up to three other controllers on other than your primary one, mm-hmm. and they're all vibrating to the beat of the music yep. to enhance your immersion. See, so, yeah, I, I had the um, the experience, very similar except, except instead of the couch vibrating uh, I have uh, some wooden TV trays and I had done like two minutes with the move controls like oh this is awful yeah. put them up on the TV tray and uh, started playing all of a sudden <laughs> I heard this god awful, awful noise sounds. I thought like something was going wrong with the cat or I had no idea what was going on I rip off the headset oh right it's those <laughs> so yeah be warned can, can we talk about can we talk about a word that keeps popping up every single time I, I search I, every since since Brez first came out mm-hmm. way back in the day. Okay, can, we need to talk about this word that they just they just lean into so heavily. Synesthesia. Synesthesia. Yes. Why can can you explain synesthesia so, and, and and how it relates to Brez? Yes. Uh, so what color is what color is seven? Blue. Okay. So synesthesia is when you map um, certain you know you map one sense to another. So, uh, you know, especially like with musicians, um, there are some musicians with synesthesia, they'll think like, a, you know, A sharp is like really, you know, bright or it's green or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, they, and they get a very strong sense of color for things that don't normally have colors or, you know, mm-hmm. that, that tree smells blue. So, uh, and I don't know, I mean, I see that word a lot in these reviews too. And I think it's a lot of people don't really know what synesthesia means. But but it's but it's also used in the marketing campaign for yes, this. Like it is. like the developers mm-hmm. are like leaning very heavily into this. Yeah. And and what I like is that it's it's not like a when Des explained it, it sounds like almost like an artistic expression of something. But it's not. It's, no, it's a it's neurological a, thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to call it a disorder, but no. it, it, it happens to a lot of people, and they're mm-hmm. still not totally sure of the reason. Yeah. Um, like some people hey, will hear oh, Molly, Molly Zenobia. I don't know if you're watching, but. She, she's a musician from the Boston area who um, absolutely has this. Uh, she's actually a brilliant musician and has been part of studies for it. So it's 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 a thing. And, and the yeah, like one of the examples I saw online was like you could hear a horn and mm-hmm. see like uh, an orange triangle. Sure, it's like what? That's so yeah. random. And, oh, actually, and, and, and some people don't. Most people don't mm-hmm. know that they even have this. Yeah, because they've they've experienced it their whole life, and they not until later in life do they they're like, oh, other people don't see. Yeah, orange triangles when they hear a horn. That's strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we we were talking, uh, you know, uh, off camera a little while ago about a uh, Torianus. Yeah. She's another uh, synes- synesthete, where she like she'll hear a song or, or you know think of a chord progression and she'll get visual images yeah. for it. And then as she adds different words, you know, and if you're a fan of her music, you know sometimes her lyrics are impenetrable. Yeah. And and a lot of times she's kind of just picking words and phrases because the sounds of them add different colors and shapes to her head. Um, so yeah. So, so what does this mean in the context of the game? I think what it means is they're actually misusing the word and confusing it with synthesis. Oh. Now a synthesis is like yes, the visuals and the music and your action and the vibration all synthesize into one complete experience together. And you really can't. You know, you said you could play this song without the uh, play this game without the music, but why why would you do that yeah i think it would you know? lose a lot of its appeal right um so, and so i think if you're using the word synthesis i think that's a great way to describe that yeah. but that doesn't sound as cool in the ad copy so a synesthesia sounds all trippy and you know weird in this kind of uh, altered state of consciousness yeah um so it to a deeper level of like neurological yeah like, insanity or something and I, and 
of course, neither of us has synesthesia. Uh-uh. So m- maybe we're completely wrong. Maybe someone, if you have synesthesia yeah. and you've played this game and there's a whole other experience involved in this, please let us know in the comments. I would love to be wrong about this. I mean, I like what they're doing. I, I like I like the the road that they're traveling down, like where they're like, okay, so we're going to make, so it's a game about rhythm and it's a game about music and it's a game about, um, you know, visuals that represent mm-hmm. music and it's about, about pulsating beats that represent the visuals yep. and it's like so i see where they're trying to like cross those lines right and i like that yeah but i don't know if they're actually doing what they think they're doing yeah i that i think it's just a, a misuse of the word and again you know this is a japanese company making a game in japan yep. trying to translate these concepts into english so there could be a whole other level of issue there too speaking of japanese developers yes let's talk about the japanese developer that made this game let's do tetsuya mizuguchi yes now this is if you don't know who Tetsuo Mizuguchi is, mm-hmm. A, you really, really should. And B, you were really underwhelmed by the Tetris announcement. Seriously. <laughs> I, I, you're out there. I know who you are. Um, he Amazingly, when, he's, when, Tetsuya, when Tetsuya Mizuguchi started working at Sega, mm-hmm. he worked on arcade cabinets. Not even like the games themselves, like the hydraulics that like made the cabinets move when you played them in the oh, arcade. Oh wow! Okay. And, and so like you can almost see from the very beginning, yeah, that he was like not just about the game; that he was about the experience mm-hmm. of playing the game. And I think that's amazing. And then of course he he uh, he got kind of merged into the United Games Artist Division of Sega, okay, where he developed uh, Luminous. Yes. No, that's not it. it. Is. I'm way off. I mean, Luminous came later. Okay. Uh, but but he, I mean, it's still one he made. One he made. Yeah. But it's Space Channel 5. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to look at my... Oh, and Rez. Rez was the other one he made at Sega. Mm-hmm. And then Sega merged with Sammy. Okay. This is the beginning of like a long, like just total mess over at Sega. And they got like super duper corporate. Yeah. And when they when they dissolved United Games Artist, uh, Tetsuya Mizuguchi was like, I'm out of here. He, he, he kind of lost his position. They wanted him to go work at Sa- uh, Sonic Team. He's like, okay. I'm I know. out. No, no, no. So he started his own company called Q Entertainment. Okay. Is that right? I don't know. Sure. I can't. All, all, all my notes are you, all messed you're up. Going to, I, I went down the trans vibrator rabbit hole. I did not go on the actual useful, useful information rabbit hole. So Q <laughs> Games. Q, at Q Games, he made a ton of awesome portable games, all in like the music rhythm vein. Okay. Luminous, Luminous. has a big one. Medios on uh, on the Nintendo DS. Okay, uh, he worked on Gunpei, ah. and uh, in every extend extra. I, this I've never heard of. Yeah, this is a uh, okay. You can actually play a free flash version of this on your PC called oh, Every cool. Extend. And okay, extra is just like the big bolstered up portable version. Nifty. Yeah. Hmm. Um, now this version I have right here is sealed because it's the new it's Ooh. the newer one I have. But the last time I owned this game, uh, I, I played the crap out of it. Okay. Um, all of these games are like super super addictive, mm-hmm. uh, and they just have like that Tetsuya Mizuguchi like stamp all over it. Now he currently no longer works at Q or Sega. Okay. <laughs> he started his He's own a wandering Ronin. He started his own company mm-hmm. called Enhance Games. Enhanced Games. And he is the only employee of Enhanced Games. Okay. I, this is my favorite person on the face of the planet. <laughs> and the only mission that Enhanced Games has yeah. is bringing uh, is bringing new versions of Tetris and Luminous to modern day consoles. I was like, okay. So he's he's like he's like I've done the work. So now I'm just it? gonna live off this forever. Wow. All yeah. right. But then now this is where it all comes together to mm-hmm. PlayStation VR. Hank Rogers, uh, the the person who owns. The Tetris name. Yes. Hank. They, they've been working together since like 2012 to create Tetris Just Effect. VR. Wow. Tetris Effect. So okay. when Tetris Effect comes out later this year, it'll, it'll be technically have been in development for since, six since years. the conception stage for yeah. six years. It's insane. That's, that's crazy. One guy, six years, coding for, yeah, um, coding for a system that didn't even exist when he started. Right. Okay. Now, if you if you take a look at all of these games yes. that he that he's been part of, and you enjoyed any of them, mm-hmm. and you're still not excited for Tetris Effect, you're out of your mind, <laughs> right? This is going to be takes the 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 most addictive puzzle game of all time ever made, with all of these awesome music style synesthesia games, <laughs> and, uh, and and just kind of crams it all together into yeah. one epic PlayStation VR experience. It's gonna be awesome. So, so speaking of Space Channel Five, I'll, I'll throw in my, my my patented Des Nugget for for today. Um, so, as you're going through the game, 
Um, you start as, you know, a certain uh, avatar, icon, whatever you want to call it. The first one is kind of like this faceted orb. Yeah. And then as you're playing the game, these little blue shapes will come down. And you get enough of those and you evolve to the next level. It's basically their, their kind of version of lives in this game. So there's uh, the faceted orb. There's kind of a human made out of squares. There's a square human who's a little bit more filled in. A silver looking human. Um, a lotus position. Uh, again, a lotus position. Then a black pulsating orb. And then finally a baby and a gyroscope. Yeah. There's another form. Yeah. Another evolution. Yes. And I'm not going to tell you how to unlock it. You're going to have to figure that out on yourself or search it on Google. Um, but you will need to play for quite a while to do this. Um, the last form is a Marolian, which are the aliens from Space Channel 5. The, like, bunny-eared awesome. things. Yeah. Um, awesome. And if you do unlock this, this is basically the super hard kick-your-ass mode because, uh, like I said, with these other evolutions, if you get hit, you basically just drop down to the next evolution and you can kind of build your life back up and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and unless you get all the way down to the square and then you die, then you have to go all the way back to the um, begin the level. So if you're on level 3 or, at, like, level 3, you know, phase 6 or whatever they call it, and you die, you mm. go all the way back to the beginning level point. If you are the Merulian and you've done the hard work to unlock it, you do not evolve, you get one hit. So you need to play the whole game without getting hit at all. Sounds worth it. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And which kind of brings um a point like you can beat this game on the basics uh, basic uh, level for like an hour, maybe. Yeah, about an hour. Um if that There's five stages. Yes. Each of them maybe ten minutes. Maybe. Yeah, or so yeah, five stages, ten uh, 10 levels per stage um, the boss battles which I guess we can talk about are, are, pr- are pretty interesting I think probably my favorite part of the game but yeah you can knock it out in an hour but that doesn't mean there's only an hour of gameplay right. in this um, oh no, no you're yeah. going you're gonna to want to play through this over and over and over you're mm-hmm. going to want to do really really well yeah. um, and you know what so we got, we got a comment ooh a uh, comment two weeks ago okay. on, our, on our Wipeout Omega collection uh, PSVR review discussion sure. on our episode of Why We Love. Okay. Uh, Robert Davis. Hey, Rob. Wrote, yeah, hey. Er- he wrote, I appreciate what you guys do. I need VR info and you guys deliver. Just too much time on the tech stuff and not enough on how the game made you feel in the moments that wowed. And at first, Interesting. I was, at first okay. I was like, dude, we talked about the game for like a half an hour. Is like, yeah. if you, can't, <laughs> you haven't found everything you're looking for. And at the second, I was like, you know what? Robert's on to something. Okay. We do get into technical stuff, but we very we seldom delve into how how did this game mm-hmm. make us feel? And that's in I want to use his comment as a jumping off point All right. to talk about the other stage in this game, the other area. There you go. Area X. Area X. Dun, dun, dun. Now, Area X used to unlock after you beat all five stages. Yes. But recently, not recently, the last update on uh, February 20, nope, October 10th of 2017, mm-hmm. about a year after the game came out, uh, patch 1.05 made Ooh. Area X unlocked. Not technical the, at all. Nope. <laughs> area X unlocked from the very beginning. Yeah. So you didn't have to beat the game anymore. You could just jump right into that mm-hmm. thing that everybody talked about. Right. What do you think of Area X? Well, so here's the thing I, I kind of hinted at the beginning. Res Infinite is just Res. Yeah. So if you've played Res before, there's not new levels or not new bosses. It's exactly the game you've played before. It's just in VR, which makes a big difference. So don't really diminish that. Area X is something totally new and original and different to the PSVR version. Yeah. Um, with, with this, you have full 360 degree freedom. You can control how fast you go, how slow you go. Um, where you target, where you aim, it's it's res completely unchained. In, in in the graphical style, despite still being based on a black backdrop oh, with, with very colors and stuff, yeah. it is instead of being like vector based, mm-hmm. it feels like firework based. <laughs> like if yeah, that's no, a it's thing. definitely like particle based. Particle right? effects, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and everything explodes into these giant fireworks, mm-hmm. and, and and the whole thing just it has a little bit of a blurriness to it, but it's only I think to give it a shimmery look. Yeah. Um, it's very, very interesting. It's almost like an open world area, and, uh, and, and yeah, and, and it's just so. It just feels so, so different from the rest of the game. It is. It's totally non-linear. I mean, there is a, kind of like a, a little circle that has a guide. You know, blue is basically where you should be heading. Red is like there's an enemy there, but you're not really punished for not going for where you're supposed to go yeah. and you're not really giving any bonuses for following the ride you're just free to sort of explore and roam uh i i think my best feel way to explain my feeling playing um playing area x is this is like 
we want to see if people like this. If we do, this is going to be what the next res will play like. Um, but it doesn't feel totally finished as in this is like a finished product or a finished level. It's, it's, it kind of feels like a demo. It does. Yeah. It does feel like a demo, but it also feels super relaxing. Like, yeah. despite the fact that there's, you know, still enemies and stuff coming mm -hmm. at you and you're firing and that whole thing. It, there, there's just, there's an element here for some reason that I feel even more immersed in Area X than I do in the rest of the game. And yeah. the rest of the game, I just, just to make sure Robert Davi Davis knows what we're talking mm -hmm. about, when you bring Res into VR... Yeah. Remember when we were talking about Wipeout? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect correlation here. Yeah. When we were talking about Wipeout, and we were like, man, this is like, we feel we feel like this is the game that like you know we thought we'd be playing in VR when we were watching the Lawnmower Man back in the day. This is Lawnmower Man. This <laughs> is the game they were showing in Lawnmower Man. Yes. Like with the yep. silver dude and everything, right? Yeah. It's just like, yep. it, it, this, this really feels m even more quote unquote generic mm -hmm. even though it, it's not generic at all no this no. it just feels so stereotypical of what a vr game we <laughs> thought would look like yeah. and here it is actually looks like um, yeah or, or or it's like it, we didn't talk about the plot but the plot is you are a hacker trying to get and get into the computer system and restart an ai so not only does it look like vr is supposed to look like it looks like what a crappy you know like like hackers the movie show you what hacking looks like yeah yeah so and just to go along with the story there's possibly a deeper meaning out there. Yeah. It, 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 people have already referenced that this could be like, the whole thing could be an, al an analogy for like your journey through life. Mm -hmm. um, even going as far as saying that your main character at the beginning of the game is like a sperm. Oh, I was yeah. like, we're taking things real far here. Well, I, I don't think it's very hidden. I mean, the whole last level is like, oh, by the way, this is about the evolution of life on Earth. Yeah, so... so yeah, it's it's not that subtle, guys. It's not you're, that subtle. But, sorry. But it, you can take it a little bit further if you want yeah. to. If you're looking for a story, you could probably find one. But I'm just watching the spikes there. I'm sorry I did it again. It's all good. <laughs> if, 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 they start, if they start just turning the big blocks, you're in trouble. Um but yeah, you can if you if you're looking for story, you can probably find it. There, there's like symbolism everywhere. Yeah. But if you, but you, this isn't the kind of thing that it, it's all very very. I don't even want to say secondary, probably yeah. tertiary at best. Um, it's a, it's more of just about the experience, and uh, don't worry yeah. about what's going on around you. And I, I yeah, I, I you know what I'm not even gonna go on that train. That's that's just me being judgmental. Um. <laughs> okay. No, uh, isn't, so, isn't that what we're here for? Well, I guess so. So, with you know, with Polybius, with with Res, um, and even with Thumper, there is the whole trippy aspect. Now, yeah. I've never done drugs; I cannot speak to that at all. You know, and it just people who are like, "Oh, there's all this depth and meaning to it." It kind of feels like the guy who's just like, "Wow, have you really looked at your hand?" It's like maybe there's some of that stuff in res but that's not like you said that's not really what it's about it's about kind of the experience and maybe if you want to look really deep to find symbolism that it, knock yourself out but but, but have you ever mm, really, really looked, looked at, at your, your hand, hand. Yeah. um yes but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um for, as someone who's done a lot of drugs yeah. i will say Whew, this is good. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, yeah. This is uh, highly, highly recommended for, uh, for for people who like Polybius. Yeah, we keep grouping these things together. Mm -hmm. I do feel like this falls more into the Polybius camp than into the Thumper camp, um, because of like you know because of what they they're kind of going for an experience, uh, mm -hmm. and and we don't want to lean too heavily into the musical side of things. Right. So uh, it's it's very it's I don't know. It, it, there's kind of nothing else like it for PlayStation VR. Unfortunately, there are it, there are things like it all over the place because this is like the third time this game has come out. Yeah, so. I, I would say the major difference between the two is, is res. I mean, there there's a whole style of play. I think it's called trance. Yeah, where you don't you know you're basically uh, immortal. You can't get any take any damage, yeah. and you just basically just kind of keep playing the game. Yeah, you're taking a tour of the world basically. Yeah, um, and it's really. Even at the harder levels, harder difficulties, and even if you do, um, there's another, once you've uh, beaten a level, you can go back and play it for points, basically. And you get points for doing better combos and get, you know, um, and even if you're doing it for that, I don't think it ever gets super, super hard. It, you no, know, versus, I, I will say the last cup, the last two levels yeah. took me quite a few times to beat. Okay. But you know, yeah. I, I'm not good at games. Yeah, but but it's it's not it's <clears throat> it's not challenging in the way where I think Polybius is really it is hard. Yeah. Like it, you know, you're not going to sit down your first afternoon and beat Polybius. That's just not going to happen. 
you know, you will do this with res. Yeah. Even if you're not very good at games, you're going to be able to beat it. You know, and, and pro- I think an hour is really long f- for someone who's like very skilled at games. Um, so I, I, Polybi- I mean, res, I think it's made to be a more relaxing kind of experience. Yeah. It's, it's an entertainment experience rather than a challenge, I guess is maybe a better way to put it. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah, uh, I think I've, I've seen mixed reactions about about the difficulty mm-hmm. online. Uh, I definitely fall into the camp that uh, yeah, it definitely added to, definitely had a bit of a challenge for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like oh, I'm going to break my controller in half. Right, right. Um, luckily, no, no, definitely. Yeah, I definitely never felt the uh, urge to rage quit this. Yeah. yeah, and luckily, if I did need another controller after I broke one, there were three others <laughs> vibrating on my couch. Uh, I don't. I think it's, we probably need to rate this thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, why, why, yeah. well, it's, it's, it, they don't know our rating scale by now. Well, hey, every episode is someone's first episode. Sure. This sure. is this is mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so our rating scale is pretty simple. Uh, one is you have to buy this game. If you have a PSVR, this has to be in your library. If you don't have a PSVR, you should buy one just so you can play this game. Uh, two is. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, if it's in a genre you particularly like, or maybe it's on sale, definitely pick it up. You know, it's it's worth worth giving a shot. Three is no. Do not buy this. Friends don't let friends buy crap. We cannot reward these people for releasing this garbage. Uh, so one, two, or three. What do you think? Ooh. This is this is a tough one. Okay. Yeah. This is a tough one, and here's and here's why it's tough. Because I love this game, mm-hmm. I, I've loved this game since the PlayStation Two. Sure, um, I was I was a little bit bummed that I didn't have an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty when Res HD came out. That's true, right? Uh, when they announced that uh, Res Infinite was going to be a PlayStation VR launch title, mm-hmm. I got real excited. Yeah, I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> I finally get to play Res again." Yeah, and this time in VR. And Ooh. let me tell you, kids, this is the way that Res was always meant to be played. Oh, clearly, clearly. Yeah. That being said. You can play this on your TV as well. Mm-hmm. So in case in, in case you have somebody in your in your family who like either doesn't like VR, or doesn't or doesn't want to play VR, or you just want to sit back and lay down on your couch for whatever reason, there there is like a 4K version of this game yeah. included in, yep. in, in in the bundle. Um, also, should note that there is a demo. Yes, there's a demo on the demo disc. If you you can mm-hmm. try this game out and see if you like it, uh, and, and if you do like it, I'm gonna just tell you don't don't even listen to my ranking. Just go buy it. And finally, on iamapit.com, mm-hmm. if you're like me and you want a physical copy of pretty much every possible game, <laughs> iamapit.com has physical copies Ooh. of Res Infinite. It looks very, very cool. The packaging is awesome, uh, and uh, then you get you know on a disc and the whole thing. It's ten dollars more and instead of being thirty. It's forty dollars, mm. and that's where I start to struggle. I, I agree because I have now spent seventy dollars on this game <laughs> <laughs> because I bought the IM eight bit version and I bought the digital. Um, and uh, and, and I got to say I don't regret either purchase, mm-hmm. but but when we give Polybius a one. You yeah. give Polybius a one because you're like, holy crap, I can play this for days and mm-hmm. it's only 15 bucks and blah, 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 blah. This game you're going to beat in an hour. Yeah. And it's $30. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, I, and I, so so this is like where the line gets drawn. This is where you're like, man, for myself personally, mm-hmm. yes, it's a one because I've got a deep back history with Res. I, I love it. The music, the, the, the awesome uh, trance electronic music, which we didn't even dive into the artist no, on this, no. but it's it's really some great music. Apex Twin, I think, is in there. Um, uh, was it Chemical Brothers again? I didn't. They see keep Chemical coming up, Brothers, oh, but no. okay. I, it might they might be. Yeah. Don't again, not not my genre of music, <laughs> but it's really really well done. Yeah. Um, so for me, this game's a one. Okay. But it comes with a huge, huge, huge asterisk. Mm-hmm. Play the demo first, or if you don't have any history with it check some reviews and see if this is a game for you for me it's definitely a one it's not a game you have to buy a psvr headset to play Mm -hmm. but you should play it no matter what yeah i don't know how um, that that didn't that didn't feel very good that 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 rating just went down the drain at the last minute see see to me i this is this is my like platonic ideal of a two yeah um, you know, and I so I come at this with no history with Res. Right. The first time I ever played Res was on the demo disc. 
Oh wow! Um, and the the you know the first time I, I actually played the full thing was you know just a, a little while ago. So I I, I find this so you come from I've played Res before I love Res. Did you were you disappointed at all when you fired it up and realized no this is exactly the same game I know it's just in VR? No. Okay. No. All right. Then that that would be my only question. Um, so if you have a history with this game and you already love it definitely pick this game up. Like I said, you know, two is, if this is a genre you like, or if there's a game you like already, yeah, based on our rating up. scale, this should, even for what I'm saying, this should be a two. Yeah. But but I like it too much to call it a two. I need to rank it a one. But with the knowledge, mm -hmm. if this isn't like your genre, play the demo. Yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, for, for me, a one is a, a few things. One of it is like, no, this is a shining example of what VR can make different, what right. VR can do uniquely. And you know what? It does change the experience. Mm. But as we said, it's like it's just it's just making res what it should have been in the first place. Well, here's the thing: is like when when I was when I had a PlayStation Three and I was wishing that Res HD came <clears> to <throat> PS Three. Yeah. I don't think I would have been real happy with my purchase if I bought if I bought Res on my PlayStation Three. Yeah. Uh, because because. It was the same game. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, it was just a little bit prettier. Now it's widescreen, and the and the sound sound a little bit better. Yeah. Right. But but yeah, when you bring something into VR, it really does change something dramatically. And, and yeah. they and they did it so well with Res that it was it was like revisiting like a child like a place that I had been as a child. Yeah. But as an adult. Well, and I, I think that may, um, that works for like Skyrim too. We've talked about that, where I was kind of burnt out on the flat version of Skyrim, and now I, I can't get enough of the VR. One thing I will say, VR makes a big difference on. Mm. So one of the bosses, I think it's uh, maybe level three or four, is basically this kind of like running shape. It's like the shape of a person yeah. that's kind of running back and forth. You need to turn around and look behind you. Oh yeah, do that. Because uh, because most of the game, you know, a, a lot of the PSVR games, let's let's face it, they're basically only you know this kind of one eighty. No, there are bosses that if you don't look behind you and start tagging stuff behind you, it's going to be very very hard to beat the uh, that boss. Or take advantage of patch one point oh four, and just click the trigger and the move button at the same time, and you'll do a one eighty. Or you could do that. Yeah, they they don't tell you that. No, they didn't tell but, them. But that, that see, <laughs> because because that was such a prevalent complaint with all the bosses. Okay. During the boss fights, during stage one through five, yeah, you can now hit both of those buttons and you do a one eighty, and uh, it makes those boss battles a lot easier. I'm. Um, well, hey, that's they didn't. There's, it doesn't say it anywhere. That's why I should do my research before I play the game. It doesn't say it anywhere. <laughs> Uh, that is what they uh, added on February 22nd, 2017, patch 1.04. They improved the audio experience. They added that option. And uh, yeah, and it only works during the boss battles, which is interesting. Right. So we've got a one with the asterisk and a hardcore two. Yeah, so I guess so. I'm giving it a really weak one. <laughs> weak one. Okay. Yeah. Somebody said we should have a five point rating system. And I was like, we oh, kind of, no, we, we kind of already do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just have like really stretchy skills. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, uh, that pretty much does it for another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR. In the comments below, we want to hear what you think of Res Infinite. Mm. Um, did you play it on the PlayStation 2 or even better yet, the Dreamcast? Right? Do you have vibrating controllers all over your house too? <laughs> uh, also, so what did you think of the game and just as important yeah. what other games you want to talk about this was such a highly requested game it was probably this one of the number one probably the number one and this is oh. why we did it yeah and i actually got to say too no motion sickness issues at all not even a little bit get this uh, and but and that was but that's not because oh i've been doing this for a long time i used to even with the demo i never had a problem that's awesome so. Oh, and if you are, if you do have synesthesia, I wasn't joking. I would love to hear if you had a different experience with this game than we did. Yeah. Also, if you have synesthesia and you don't have this game, I still want to hear about your experience because it sounds like yeah. such a cool. Come on over. We'll let you play interesting it. story. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. Well, I'm, just, yeah. I'm curious. What 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 colors do you? I should hear? talk to Molly. I I, have, I I mean, I'm not like super friendly with her. Talk by to a Molly. Friend. Is this a drug reference? No. For another episode of Why We Love PlayStation VR, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Desra, and we'll see you next week.